welcome guys now let's start our new topic uh, one of uh, very very important components uh, when we study the production and control circuits uh, is circuit breaker and isolator and I thought that I should uh, prepare a separate lecture on these topics so that you will be able to understand these two important components okay circuit breaker what is circuit breaker circuit breaker is on load device that is used to break fault or load current another definition circuit breaker is an automatically operated electrical switch designed to protect an electrical circuit from damage caused by excess current from an overload or short circuit its basic function is to interrupt current flow after a fault is detected so there are two components for controlling that are mainly used in the substation one is breaker another one is isolator sometimes we are calling it circuit breaker sometime in production engineer we are calling it CB what is the status of CB and sometime you can also call it simply breaker uh, miniature circuit breaker that uh, we already know which are in our houses also a breaker but uh, in our production philosophy we are never calling it as a breaker we are calling it MCB always you are calling it MCB to differentiate from the mean breaker that is used to control power circuitry at uh, medium voltage high voltage and extra high voltages so this is how the production philosophy we are using the, this term especially like this so a uh, breaker is basically a device uh, for example if there is a fault then uh, it will break the fault current it is designed to break the fault current and if if you if we want to interrupt the power for example you want to switch off you can use this breaker also in houses we are seeing we are seeing a simple switch uh, to on and off because at low levels uh, you don't need a specialized uh, interrupting units to interrupt the current but at high voltages and high currents a special uh, mechanism and special arrangement is required and uh, especially interrupter unit is used to break the load current otherwise current will not be breaked and the fault current or load current will be continuous as spark and it will it can damage the breaker so this is the circuit breaker so if anyone asks you you can tell that this is an on load device this is how 132 kV circuit breaker look like if you see this is the uh, structure this steel this is called as a structure and here you can put bolts and you can put it uh, on the foundation this is called as a circuit breaker mechanism box here you can find circuit breaker mechanism and controlling circuitry this is basically the pole we are calling it the pole of the breaker uh, mechanism will operate and push the interrupter uh, inside this poles so there is a mechanism like this it will open when we want to interrupt or put the breaker there are two type of breakers where uh, there is a common mechanism which is driving this these poles to interrupt the current it's called three pole operated breakers and the breakers where each pole has its own mechanism to open which is called as single pole operated breakers at extra high voltages normally single pole is used at 220 or 380 500 kV level Whereas on 132 kV in some cases 220 kV and below single pole uh, three pole mechanism it means there is a single mechanism to drive these three poles is used. Okay, each circuit breaker when it operates has its own auxiliary contacts. This we have already studied in part one about the auxiliary contacts. It has its own auxiliary contacts. These contacts. Uh, for the circuit breaker especially we are calling it 52A and 52B 
52 is a code for circuit breaker and A and B are two contacts A are normally open contact and B are normally closed contact this we know from, from our previous lectures so if you are not able to understand anything always go back and just attend my first lecture so this is an C contact means breaker normal position is open position when breaker is open so breaker is shown open in the drawing so this contact will be closed this will be open this will be closed this will be open so these are the contacts of breaker are shown so you can see this is uh, this is your assignment to find that what is the meaning of arrow here this I am keeping for you in later lecture I will obviously answer okay circuit breaker auxiliary contacts I have prepared some text so that you can in future read it and always in my lectures first putting the text and then explaining my own words so that you can remember it so let's read the definitions every breaker comes fitted with an auxiliary switch it is mechanically linked to the breaker trip close mechanism within the auxiliary switch case you can have either form A contact 52A or form B contact 52B a form A contact presents a normally open contact thus when the breaker is open its 52A contacts are open too. When the breaker is closed, 52A contacts are closed. The 52A co co contact follows the status of breaker. So, we will not be showing uh, that this is NO or NC contact. The breaker contacts are shown like 52A and 52B. A form B contact presents a normally closed contact it operates exactly opposite of what an A does. When breaker is open, the 52B contacts are closed. When the breaker is closed, the 52B contacts are open. So this is the definitions you can always keep with you. If you are in confusion, you can come to this slide. Okay, here just for your uh, understanding and uh, increasing the conceptual view I have uh, shown here the circuit this is the circuit breaker mechanism here you can see and there is a and it is connected to uh, this black box in which auxiliary switches are available and it is connected through shaft so when breaker is open the position of this shaft will change it will from here it will come up to here and this contact also both so in this way auxiliary contacts are operated so if you are in inspection and somehow this rod is broken so even the breaker contacts uh, physically are changing the auxiliary contact will not change this is just an a hint for troubleshooting and you can see here let me zoom you can see this square box this is used for adjustment of these contacts so if if for example the status is not coming accurately you have the option from this you can calibrate it so that the contact status is shown correctly so this is used for calibration so this is the little bit introduction about the breakers so we'll move to our next topic which is isolator so another important uh, topic or another point most important equipment for use for switching is isolator isolator is offload device it is used to isolate the circuit for maintenance purposes isolator are used to open circuit under no load condition it's its main purpose is to isolate one portion of the circuit from the other and it is not intended to be open while current is flowing in the circuit so isolator main purpose is to isolate the circuit for maintenance this is one of the main purpose another purpose uh, of the isolator is for I have not mentioned here but I can tell you is for 
make the switching uh, by using the isolator you can select the bus part you can select the feeders which bus so it's also controlling the power using this isolator so you can control the power you can direct the power also but provided that you should not use this isolator under load condition it means the breaker it, it isolator is always mostly in series with the breaker if it is in series of breaker the interlock must be present that if breaker is closed it should never be able to open it and if for example it is used as a bus coupler and there is no breaker the interlock should be present that both buses must be de-energized not connected with the any source or feeding current if you want to operate this isolator this is basically you can see physically how isolator is look like uh, this these are the contacts of the isolator and these you can see these are the corona shields which are basically to bypass the arc there are two type of isolators one are which are open and close horizontally and in another type the contacts are close vertically uh, in the same way isolator also have auxiliary contacts just like a breaker and they are also showing the status of the isolator so these are the one of the two important components that you will mostly see in the drawings and their auxiliary contacts so i hope you enjoy the lecture and then you can always uh, check the drawing give the proper time to understand these components so i will keep on explaining it and so you will be able to understand easily so thank you very much